Let's make a pumpkin. My channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this pumpkin. I'm very excited. This was a lot of fun for me and I think you're going to have a lot of fun too. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and then click all. That way you get notified whenever I release a brand new video. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, tips and tricks, fun giveaways, and so much more. You are not going to want to miss out. The pattern for this pumpkin can be located in both the description section right below this video and the comment section. I'm going to pin a comment to the very top. So if you go to the comment section, it's going to be the very first comment. You can find the link to the pattern. Just click on that link and purchase the pattern. You do not have to have the pattern to make this pumpkin. I'm going to be very descriptive in the stepping, the steps, the stitches, the process on how to make this pumpkin in this video. But if you would like to have the pattern so you're not having to watch this video over and over and over again to get through step, 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 then it could be a great reference, even though I would love for you to watch this video as many times as you want and crochet with me and spend time with me. That doesn't bother me at all. All right, <laughs> so when you are ready, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials I used make this pumpkin. All right, when it comes to what materials we are going to need to make pumpkin number one, we're going to need two different colors of yarn. These are both a size four weight, worsted, medium, Aran, 10, 12 ply, or eight WPI size yarn for both of these. I chose one color to be the main color of the body of the pumpkin and this color over here to be the stem of the pumpkin just to set it apart. The yarn that I used specifically was Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek. And this is the color linen. Where are you? I know it's lin linen right there. And then the other color here is also Yarn Bee Soft and Sleek in the color brownie. So if you wanted to use the exact same colors I am using, this is what you're using. But if you wanna use whatever you have on hand or whatever you have local to you to get your hands on, use that same sized weight or same sized yarn that I'm using. That way your pumpkin will turn out as close as possible to my pumpkin. All right, so the amount of yarn that I used for the main body of the pumpkin, I used approximately 232 yards or 213 meters, five ounces, or 142 grams of yarn. I basically used one whole skein of this yarn to make the body of the pumpkin with a little bit left over, okay? And then this color right here for the stem, I only used about nine yards, eight meters, five grams, or 0.2 ounces of yarn. So barely any, but I still wanted to offset that color. You'll also need a crochet hook size G6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. If your size G crochet hook says 4.25, it's fine. It's barely noticeable with the difference. You'll need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, tapestry needle for a lot of different things in this project. So that's gonna be very important. You're gonna need polyfill or a stuffed animal stuffing to fill the pumpkin with. And then completely optional, I used glass beads to weigh my pumpkin down. That way it stayed put instead of wobbling about and falling off wherever I put it. So I used the glass beads. I found this whole pack at the Dollar Tree. So they're really, really inexpensive, really cheap. But again, optional, you do not have to use these. Okay, I will put a link to everything you see here in the description section and comment section below this video. So if you want to utilize anything that I have specifically, you can get your hands on it. Just click that link and purchase the item or go ahead and feel free to get whatever you wanna use or whatever's on hand available to you. Once you have everything ready to go, let's go ahead and dive into actually making pumpkin number one. Beginning with our crochet hook and the yarn that you're gonna use for the main body of the pumpkin. Go ahead and take that right there. We are going to be working the herringbone half double crochet stitch. So if you would like to familiarize yourself with that stitch before getting started with this project, I will put a link right here at the top of the screen. That'll take you straight to the video that I created a quick explanation on how to do the herringbone half double crochet crochet stitch. We are going to start with a tail long enough for us to weave in our ends at the end of the project. 
create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. For this project specifically, we are going to start by chaining 63 chains. One, two, three, four, 62 and 63. Great. Let's move on to row number one. For row number one, we will start by making our first herringbone half double crochet stitch in the third chain from our crochet hook. So looking at our V stitches, one, two, three, yarn over, insert crochet hook, yarn over, pull through, pull straight through that first loop on your crochet hook, leaving you with two loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops, and that's your herringbone half double crochet stitch. For row one, all you're doing is making one herringbone half double crochet stitch in each chain all the way across. That first two chains that we skipped over, it does count as your first stitch. So you're going to be creating a total of 61 herringbone half double crochet stitches, but in total, including this chain two, you'll have a total of 62 stitches by the end of row one. So all I want you to focus on right now is making one herringbone half double crochet stitch in every chain all the way across. I will meet you at the end of row one to show you how we get on to row two. Sixty and 61. Great. We've made it to the end of row one. To move on to row two, we will chain two, one, two. We will turn our work. That chain two does count as our very first stitch and it will take the stitch space of the very first stitch right here. So we're going to skip one, move to the second stitch space, and then continue working our herringbone half double crochet stitches, making one herringbone half double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across for row two. You will count a total of 61 actual stitches that you make, and that chain two that we created would count as our 62nd or 62 stitches, okay? So if we count the chain two, it'd be one, two, three, four. Continue on for a total of 62 stitches. Sixty. 61 and at the very end of row two, you're going to search for that chain two that you started the last row with and you're going to make your last herringbone half double crochet stitch in that top chain of that chain two. All right, all right. So to move on to row three, we just repeat exactly everything we did for row two. In fact, we are going to repeat row two through the end of row 34, where we're just going to chain two every single time, turn our work, skip that first stitch space, and make one herringbone half double crochet stitch in every stitch all the way across, ending at the very end here, finding that chain two that we made to get onto the next row, and we will make our very last half double or herringbone half double crochet stitch in that top chain to close out the row. That's all we're doing. So go ahead and finish up this section. It should look like a really big rectangle when you are done. We want that, that's, that's good, that's what we want, okay? And I will meet you at the end of row 34 to show you what we do next. 61 and 62, perfect. All right, so I just made it to the very end of row 34. Again, if you hadn't noticed, each one of these sections here that really stick out, there's two rows in each section. 
So if you come down to the beginning here, it'd be two, four, six, eight, ten, and repeat that to count your rows. That's just a really helpful tip if you were struggling to count your rows. So next step we're going to do, we do not cut our yarn. In fact, what we're going to do is we're going to take this giant rectangle that we've made and fold it in half this way so that the lines align with each other, the rows align with each other. And what we are going to be doing is turning this sideways and we are going to be single crocheting these two sides together. We will make one single crochet stitch on the side of each row. So you should end with a total of 34 single crochet stitches because there were 34 rows, okay? So we are going to take our crochet hook and you'll see that the flap is actually on the top. I'm gonna take my crochet hook, insert it into the side of this row, pull that loop tight, then come to the other work, find that row. If you need to loosen it just so you can see the rows. So here's that line. So one, two, find the stitch. I'm gonna insert my crochet hook between those two stitches right there. Then I'm gonna tighten that loop on my crochet hook, bringing those two sides together. Yarn over, pull that yarn through both of the sides. So I have two loops on my crochet hook then yarn over and pull through both loops for a single crochet stitch. All right, so let's do the next one together. So here I'm looking at the back of the work. So I see that I have one, two rows, because I'm looking at my lines here and between each line is two rows. Finding those stitches, inserting my crochet hook between those last two stitches, move that side over here. Here's the next row insert my finger between those two stitches, insert my crochet hook, then yarn over, pull through both sides, yarn over, pull through both loops. All right, let's keep going. So next row down between those first two stitches, insert my crochet hook over here, next row down, two stitches, insert my crochet hook between those two stitches, then yarn over, pull that yarn through, yarn over, both loops. All right, so I'm gonna continue to work this uh, join, single crochet join of the two sides together. I'm gonna work it very slowly, so hopefully you can pick it up. Remember that there is a feature on your YouTube video where you can slow down the video if, you, if I'm going too fast for you. So all you have to do is go to settings, then playback speed and slow down the video. But I'll just keep working this a few more stitches and then I will meet you at the end to show you what we do next. coming upon the end here and let's do two more so one and then last row here and last row here boom great okay so we've made it all the way down our pumpkin side you should have two holes and then this side is joined together what we're going to do now is actually take our scissors we're going to cut a smaller tail we will take our crochet hook, yarn over that tail we just cut, pull that yarn through the loop on our crochet hook, pull tight, and that is tying off your work. And then what I like to do is I like to take these two tails and I like to tie a knot in them just to secure them. I like to make sure in all ways that things are secure. There we go. Perfect, so these two tails will end up being on the inside of our pumpkin, so we don't have to worry about weaving anything in. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take some yarn, we're gonna cut about a 15 inch long tail, and that's an approximation, okay? So about, about 15 inches. And cut 
cut. All right, grab your yarn needle or tapestry needle, thread that through. There we go. Okay, taking your work, your rectangle here, I'm going to join this yarn in the same spot that I have this join right here. So I'm gonna find where they're together, they connected. I'm going to insert my yarn needle into this stitch here. And then I'm going to tie a knot so that way it stays secure. And I have a rule of three for some reason. I like to make three knots. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're going to weave our yarn needle in and out of stitches all the way around, okay? So take a second, take your yarn needle and go in and then out and then in and then out. And just repeat this process all the way around and I will meet you once you get all the way around to the other side of this join here, okay? You, you are doing so great. Okay, and once you get to the end here, that was the last stitch for me. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that yarn that's still on your yarn needle and you're gonna pull it. And it's gonna cinch this side of your pumpkin together. Okay, so even if you have to insert your hand on the inside to free up some room, get some, some of that yarn out of the way, the material out of the way, so you can really pull this as tight as you can. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your yarn needle, go on the opposite side of the work, come through, pull that tight, and then what I'm going to do is take my yarn needle, insert it into the work here, pull that up, but leave a loop on my finger, leave a loop behind here. I'm gonna take this loop, I'm going to twist it so it forms this X shape here. Taking my yarn needle, going over the X shape, underneath, and through where my finger was, and then slowly pull, feeding that through so we can control where the knot secures. And that's a slip knot. And that helps me tie off or tie a knot in my work. Now, what you may notice, I'm gonna put a hand inside here, is the hole is not 100% closed up. So what I do is I take this leftover yarn here and I will start just closing that hole up. Great, once you are confident that the hole in the bottom is closed and secure, go ahead and release the thread or yarn from your yarn needle. And if you want, tie a knot and all these strings together. Do, do, do. Perfect. And then I like to cut off the excess slack because it's not necessary. However, you could just leave all this on the inside and no one will ever see it. So what we're gonna do now, we have the join on this side, we have all these ends on this side. I'm gonna stick my hand on the inside, grab it and pull it inside out. And that will help my join to be inverted, which I want. I'm gonna use this join as one of my seams for my pumpkin. And then it also covers up all of those sewings, all those tails, everything I did at the bottom of the pumpkin is completely concealed and it looks really nice and neat. So at this point, we can stuff our pumpkin. And I like to stuff the pumpkin about three fourths of the way full. That way I can still do everything I need to do to close up the top of this pumpkin. And then as I'm closing the top of the pumpkin, I can add more polyfill, more stuffing as I go, just to make sure that I'm not like struggling or fighting with the stuffing as I'm trying to work here. For me, I like to add the glass beads 
to the bottom of my pumpkin because it gives it some weight. So wherever I place this pumpkin, it stays put. I use 20 glass beads. One, two, and if you needed for whatever reason to sew or to wash your pumpkin, these glass beads are fine. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I'm gonna take a second and stuff my pumpkin about three fourths of the way full with the polyfill. I will meet you back here in a second once I'm all ready to move on to the next step. And coming up upon the end here, there we go. Okay, and then once you get to the end, you cinch it closed, awesome. Okay, again, I'm gonna take my end, I'm gonna go over connect with the other side and come back in the hole that I just, or the stitch space that I just came out of. I'm gonna go ahead and tie off. So I'm gonna insert my yarn needle, hold back some yarn with my thumb. I'm gonna take this yarn and I'm gonna twist it so it forms this X shape. See the X shape? I'm gonna take my yarn needle, I'm gonna go over, underneath the loop, pull that through, and then slowly feed that, slowly pull for a slip knot, and that ties off the work. Now for me, there is a hole still there, but I'm gonna leave it alone because I'm gonna cover this hole with the stem that I make. So I'm not so concerned about this hole because I'm gonna cover it with the stem. Right, next step, depending on how much yarn or thread you have left on your yarn needle. What we wanna do, and my pumpkin's kinda lumpy, so I might actually just kind of try to mold it a little bit. Try to smooth out some of those spots that are indented. Next step, guys, we're gonna take our yarn needle and we're gonna go through the center of our pumpkin. So if you want to, you could even go through the hole there. We're gonna take our pumpkin, we're gonna squish it, and we're going to try to work that needle through to the center of the other end of the pumpkin. Now, the bigger the pumpkin, the more difficult it is to do this. But, ta-da, there we go. So I take the end, center of the bottom, and when you pull, it creates that cute little bunching on the top. See that? And then what we're going to do is we're going to, since I ran out of yarn here, I'm gonna just go ahead and tie off this work or tie off this thread by pushing this in, like cinching it in as much as I can that way. Inserting my yarn needle somewhere close to the center middle. Again, taking that loop that I have here I'm going to twist that loop, go over and under and pull through to tie that knot. All right, and then I'm gonna take this little tail here and I'm just going to take my yarn needle, insert somewhere into the pumpkin. You can poke out anywhere you wanna poke out and just release that thread on the inside of the pumpkin push to suck that thread inside the pumpkin and then that's fine. All right, so this is what we're left with here. I like to make my pumpkin a little more, like I want I want more stability there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a little more thread, just enough to play with. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to continue to weave this string in the center of the pumpkin just to add some more stability, strength, and structure to the pumpkin actually being molded. So attaching this new string, the new thread to my pumpkin here. I'm going to do this again, inserting my needle in the middle and working it, coming through the bottom. There we go. And I will pull, but this time I have enough thread where I can insert my yarn needle back into another spot of the center and go backwards. 
through the center of my pumpkin and out the top middle. I'll pull that tight and then I will go ahead and tie off because I like how the pumpkin looks at this point. There we go. Awesome. So here's my pumpkin main body structure. Next thing I want to do is start forming the lines in my pumpkin to give it that pumpkin section look that everybody knows so well. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this yarn that's on my needle. Side. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to take what's remaining of my yarn and if you can, you can either choose to divide, depending on how much you have left, you can divide what's left in three. I want you to try to aim for approximately 20 inches long in thread here. We want to err on a lot here. Okay, so. That. At least 20 inches. All right, so we're gonna start by attaching this thread to the top of our pumpkin. And all I do is insert my yarn needle somewhere in the pumpkin and out. And then I'll tie this to attach it. Okay, I want to begin actually with my join. So if you look here, that is where I joined the two sides together and did the single crochet line. I'm going to start here. I'm going to follow this line all the way up and just go in and out, weaving through the rows. And you don't have to be like specific or perfectionist here. We're just following this line. Going in and out. All the way down, we're gonna follow this, this line all the way down to the bottom center of the pumpkin. Okay, coming upon the bottom center of the pumpkin. Almost there. There we go. Okay. Bottom center. All right, so now what I will do is I'm going to pull that, that thread and it forms that divot that we look for when we make or when we see real pumpkins. And depending on how tight you pull will be how defined that line is. And this way, if you weave the thread in and out of the rows of the pumpkin, then you don't get that very obvious string or thread that is on the outside or outer surface of the pumpkin, holding the pumpkin together and you can move those and they can be lost or come undone. All right, so we're not gonna stop here though. We're gonna continue the line and we're gonna go, we're gonna keep going straight and we're going to start working the other side of the pumpkin, going in the straight line, working from the bottom center all the way up to the top center. Here we go. Okay, coming to the top center of the pumpkin here. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to pull Great, and that creates that divot right here. And what I'm gonna do actually is I'm going to squish my pumpkin, mold the pumpkin, and make sure that the stuffing is hitting where I want it to, and making sure that the rows and everything is hitting the way I want it to. Perfect. Now I'm going to tie off this string so it stays tight, it stays put. And this is not gonna be enough string for us to continue on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just insert my yarn needle into the project, 
poke out one of the sides and cut off the slack. Great. Okay, so we're going to repeat this process that we just did, starting at the top, working our way over two more times. We're going to cut two more strings that are at least 20 inches long, at least one, two, great. And we're going to create a total of six sections, six. So right now we have two, so we're going to put three on this side, three on this side. So if you start here, you could make a line going this way and then here a line going this way and that's all that is gonna be. I'll go ahead and work these through with you. I have approximately 10 stitches between each line. There's a total of 62 stitches, if you recall, that were in this rectangle. So if you divide 62 by six sections, you're gonna get four sections that have a perfect 10 stitches and two sections that will have 11 stitches in them. So we will get as close to being even as we can, but if we're not spot on, it's fine. Okay, so attaching from the top. Go one, two, three, finding my line. So from this join, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So approximately in this line right here, I'm going to get as close as I can. Weaving in and out. And don't forget that we're going to go ahead and go, oh, there we go. We're gonna go all the way around. So we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and then continue that line from the bottom to the top on the other side, okay? So continue this. I will meet you at the end of this second thread and then together we'll do the third thread to finish off this structure of the pumpkin. So I'm going to continue working a little closer to the center. There we go. There's the center. Okay, and then I'm going to tie off and make one more tie off. Here we go. Boom. There we go. Okay, taking my yarn needle, inserting it into the work through the side. All right, and cutting off slack. And last, last thread here, and I think you got this. I'll meet you at the end of your thread to show you how we start making the stem. Awesome, okay, so we have just made all of our six sections for our pumpkin. Let's take a second and squeeze it, mold it, Look at your stitches. See if you want to bunch them somewhere because they're showing too much stuffing somewhere. Or if they're too bunched in a spot and you want to spread out those rows a little bit more. Okay. I feel like this one has a little bit of a, a divot spot, so I'm going to mold that stuffing a little bit more. But here we are. Go ahead and take that tail and stuff it into that top hole that is still open. And there is my pumpkin. So cool. All right, let's go ahead and make the top stem. To make the stem of our pumpkin, go ahead and grab color B or your second color that you want to use that is different from the main body color of your pumpkin. We are going to be working in rounds for the stem continuous rounds. So if you want to utilize stitch markers, you absolutely can. I'm actually going to use the tail of my yarn as my row marker to help guide me from row to row. So if you want to use your tail as a row marker like I am, start with about a five inch long tail and then create your slip knot. If you want to use stitch markers or you do not want to use this method, you can start with a two inch long tail and then create your slip knot. 
When working in rounds, there's actually two ways you can do it. There's the chain two method or making a magic ring. If you wanna make a magic ring, instead of doing a slip knot, you'll just make the magic ring, okay? I prefer the chain two method. So I'm gonna start by just chaining two. One, two, both methods get you in the exact same spot. So it's really personal preference. For round one, you're going to make six single crochet stitches in the first chain or six single crochet stitches inside your magic ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Great. So if you're using stitch markers, I would put a stitch marker in the top of the sixth single crochet stitch that we just made. I'm going to take this long tail that I have here. I'm going to yarn over that tail and pull the tail through the loop on my crochet hook. And that indicates to me that I've just finished round one. Because we're working in continuous rounds, we're going to dive straight into round two. We will not slip stitch to close the round and then chain one, okay? For round two, we are going to increase single crochet in each stitch around. All that means is we're going to make two single crochet stitches in each stitch around. You will end round two with a total of 12 single crochet stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 12. Perfect. Move that stitch marker to the 12th stitch that we just made, or I'm going to take my long tail and yarn over the long tail, pull it through the loop on my hook, reinsert my hook, and we have just finished round two. For round three, we're going to make an increased single crochet stitch in the first stitch, and then one single crochet stitch in the next stitch, and then two single crochets, one, two single crochets, one. Repeat this pattern all the way around for round three, ending round three with a total of 18 single crochet stitches. One, same stitch, two, three, then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 17, 18. Great. Move that stitch marker to the 18th stitch here. I'm going to take my row marker tail, yarn over and pull through the loop on my crochet hook. We have just finished round three. For round four, we're going to make one single crochet stitch in the back loop only of each stitch space all the way around. You should end round four with a total of 18 single crochet stitches. So looking at the next stitch here, looking at the V on the top, we're going to take our crochet hook and place it in the middle of the V and only go underneath that back loop only. Yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, pull through. Next V stitch here, take our crochet hook, place it in the middle of the V, only go through that back loop only. There we go. Seventeen, eighteen. Great. Move that row marker and we are ready for round five. For round five, we're going to start decreasing or shrinking our stem. So we're finished with the top of our stem and now we're starting to work down the sides of our stem. We begin round five by making a decrease single crochet in the first two stitches. So take your crochet hook, insert into the first stitch, yarn over, pull through. Take your crochet hook, insert into the second stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three loops on your crochet hook. And what we just did was we turned two stitch spaces into one. For the rest of round five, we are just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round five with a total of 17 single crochet stitches. 
All right, just finished round five. Moving on to round six. For round six, we are just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round six with a total of 17 single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, 17. Great. Move our row marker tail. For round seven, we're going to decrease single crochet the first two stitches together. And then make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round six with a total of 16 stitches. Great, ready for round eight. For round eight, we are just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. Again, you will end round eight with a total of 16 stitches. Perfect, we are now ready for round nine. For round nine, we are going to decrease single crochet the first two stitches together and then make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round nine with a total of 15 stitches. Great, move that row marker. For round 10, we are making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round 10 with a total of 15 stitches. Perfect, great, move that row marker. We are now on round 11. For round 11, we will decrease single crochet the first two stitches together and then make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round 11 with a total of 14 stitches. Perfect, great. On our last round here, we are on round 12. For round 12, we will end by making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way around. You will end round 12 with a total of 14 stitches. Perfect, we just made it to the end of round 12. I'm going to move my round marker Boom, just like that. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the very first stitch of what would be round 13. So just making a slip stitch. And that helps to even out this line. Grab your scissors, cut a long enough tail for us to attach this stem to our pumpkin. Looking at about 14, 12 to 14 inch long tail here. Yarn over the long tail, pull through the loop on your crochet hook, pull tight for a slip knot to tie off your work. I'm going to take my little tail here and tuck it on the inside of the stem. And then I'm gonna pull out my polyfill or my stuffed animal stuffing. I'm going to stuff the stem. You don't wanna overstuff, but you want it to hold structure. You do not want to be able to see the stuffing through the stitches. All right, perfect. I want the top to be a little more flat, so I might remove some of the stuffing here because I like having it flat on the top and not rounded so much. There we go. Okay, so now we are going to grab our yarn needle or tapestry needle. We're done with our crochet hook. Let's attach this stem. Perfect. So grabbing the side of your pumpkin, that is the top center, which probably has the opening still there. We're going to take the stem and place it right over the opening. And then we are going to attach. So taking our yarn needle in and out, in and out. Do what you can to try to keep the stem in place. Really hold it there. If you need to pin it in place, you can do that too, just to make sure it doesn't move on you. All right, there we go. Stem is attached. Look, pull your stem. Make sure you didn't miss a stitch, miss a spot leaving a big gap 
or a big hole. We don't want that. This is the time where we can fix anything or cover anything up if we need to. I feel great about my placement. So I'm going to go ahead and tie off my string. Here we go. Insert my yarn needle into the work. Pull out the side. Release my yarn needle. Cut the slack here. And this is my pumpkin. Oh my gosh, I hope you love it. I hope you had so much fun. All right guys, so what did you think of pumpkin number one? Did you enjoy the process? Did you think the creation of the pumpkin was easy enough? If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask me in the comment section below this video. I would love to help. Also, if you liked this project, you might really enjoy these videos that are right here. It's a bunch of other videos that are similar to this that I think you would have a lot of fun watching or watch this video right here, which is a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have the best day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.